Hallelujah. All praise and esteem to Yah as we begin on this journey. This is Dr. Ina Silva, Barak Yah, from Line of Judah. I want to share with you this video on a prophetic word that Yah has given to his people to hear. Uh, we've, we're in a season now where we need to hear. We need to hear like never before. We need to hear. We need to hear his voice. We need to know his voice. We need to get rid of all attitude. We need to get rid of all snottiness. We need to get rid of. We need to get rid of. We need to get rid of. And so this is going to be one of those type of words from Yah where we get an understanding that his voice has got to be the only voice. And it's got to be the true voice that we're hearing. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about what's not his voice. We're going to talk about what is his voice. We're just going to go over some things and make sure that we're clear with what the Almighty is giving us to do. Hallelujah. So for the agenda for this, I want to go over the fact that there are no exclusives. Right. And I know this is going to be unpacked, but there are no exclusives. The primary goal of Yah is to redeem his people. And the biggest area of growth within Israel right now is this word. It is unity. Let us not forget, brethren, that he is calling the dry bones back to life. And he is uniting the two sticks. So let our heart be prepared for that. He's uniting the two sticks. But let, let's be clear that he not just doing it at the moment that he shows up. Our heart has to be cultivated and ready. I'll say that again. He's not doing the uniting of the two sticks and calling the dry bones back to life at the moment he appears. No, he's doing that work. He's doing the, that work now. And the moment he appears, the finalization of all the work that he's been doing in his olive tree, in his people, it's going to manifest. But the majority of that work is being done now. The majority of that work is being done now. So we have to get the unity together in Israel. We have to get the unity together. People I'm seeing in some small pieces, because you know what? I'm not seeing everything. I'm not seeing everybody. I am a prophetess, so I won't say I'm looking at every single person, but Yah has given me that vision, that sight to see that the people of Yah are still struggling with coming together. Ezekiel was clear in his vision. Ezekiel 37 and 17. It's clear. It is a process of joining together of the two sticks. Right? What is going on with people when they can't even work together from one assembly to the next? Yeah, we got to get rid of that. Oh, I go to this assembly. Like, it's the same dumb mess that was in churches. We got to see that that is a deaf, dumb uh, spirit, and we got to rebuke it. And it's really bad on leadership. Yeah. Y'all is having me rebuke leadership because there's a lot going on with leaders from different, what you want to say, ministries. And not all leaders are doing this, but there are some leaders, they are not working together. And Yah's going to mark that. I said, Yah's going to mark that. I'll say it again. I said, Yah's going to mark that. If you're somebody who's got a criticizing mouth and all you can do is criticize your other brethren and their ministries, and you can never work together, and then you're leading the people who are behind you to not be willing to work together, that's going to be a problem. 
Yeah, that's going to be a problem. That That's going to call you up under a judgment with Yah. And you can take that to the bank that Prophet Silva told you that. Because this is not a game. This is not where we're forming cliques. Because you still got people want to form cliques. Like they got the exclusives. I'm unpacking it now. I'm unpacking it to you. What I'm saying, there are no exclusives. Like they got the exclusives on Yah. And oh, if you want to really get to know Yah, you come over here with us because, you know, we study scripture. Like this is a body. Get with it. This is a body. Yah is calling his people together from the four corners of the earth. And the only thing that is exclusive is his body. And yes, there are going to be many false prophets. I ain't even talking about them. We already know they out there. I'm talking about those that are really trying to be truthful. Right? And strive in the gifts that Yah has given them. Yes, yeah, some, some, some are still uh, rubbing y'all wrong a bit with not being willing to work together, okay? And I tell you some stuff that people are tripping over because it's, it's bad. People tripping over the calendar. Oh my God, that, that one, I was a baby coming into this and y'all really began to deal with me because I transitioned from the church like so many of us that are now awakening and understanding that we're Israel. I transition. And as I transition, y'all really begin to deal with me deep in my spirit, almost to a moan and a groan. Look at my people sitting up here arguing about a calendar. Yes, I said that. Yes, I said that. Yes, I said that. It's bigger than that. Oh my goodness, somebody need to get this revelation. It is bigger than that. So leaders need to stop coming to the table, arguing with each other about the calendar and not being willing to fellowship with each other because of calendar differences. Can I tell you, y'all's gonna judge it. And I know there are plenty of people out there saying they got prophetic gifts. There are plenty of people out there who want to teach and ain't been sent. But like I said, we're not talking about the false prophets. We're talking about people who really want to repent here. If you really want to repent, you're going to hear y'all talking to you through me. You're going to hear his voice. Because I'm not bucking and pretending. I deeply understand that he is calling his people together. Ah, I, I deeply understand that. And I know better than to get in the way. Mm -mm. I don't. I don't want that. I don't want that to be my my portion, where I'm getting in the way. And I'm not saying for leaders to open up their flock to let a bunch of false prophets run through. I get it. Where you want to protect the people, I get that. But there needs to come a sincere bow in the presence of Yah with some of these leaders. And you know who you are because you can hear him talking to you through me. You can feel his tug. Where you're discouraging fellowship. Mm hmm Y'all does not want us running around mixing and messing with false prophets. But just because someone is on a different calendar, that does not make them a false prophet. I'm sorry. I know for some people, because they still they still tripping over the lettering of the word, uh, the ancient path is within. I know. I know what I'm saying. It don't register with some people because they're, they're looking at the lettering of the word and they got caught right there. They got caught. And I know they're like, oh, we, we, we got to keep. I'm not saying don't keep the feast. That's not what I'm saying. I'm calling out the lack of unity. I'm calling out the idea that I can mistreat another brother because they use a different calendar for me. That I can run them down and talk about them like a dog because they are using a different calendar for me. Because they have a different understanding about it than I do. I can run them down with my mouth. When y'all already said don't bite and devour each other. 
come on, man. We got to get past that. We got to see this. We got to see the, the devices of the enemy. We got to see the devices of the enemy. It's time to get past it. It's been going on now long enough. The agenda is there are no exclusives. And I only use that as one example. There's so much other petty stuff that people are refusing to fellowship with each other about that I could go on and on with the list. I've even heard people not fellowship with other people because of how they wear their zit zits. And I'm not talking about babes in Christ. I'm talking about people that are saying they're leaders. Because this person where there are this group of people or this leaders teaching their flock to where their ZZs like this, we're not going to fellowship with them. That's, listen, that is beyond crazy. And if you're a person that's saying you really love Yah and you're leading like that, then that's going to lead you to de your demise. That's why the Bible says everybody shouldn't be teachers. There are no exclusives to this. It's a four corner of the world calling back to people. And we should be smart enough to know that as we are being called back, there are going to be some differences. And that, yes, the leaders have to be able to sit down and work those differences out. But there should not be a walking away from the table and a disrespecting of one another. Ah, there should not be. That's got to go. That's got to go. We we know this eclipse is coming. The olive in the top is going to be a put across this nation. And I'm telling you, you want to see Yah's hand of judgment? Move. Continue to move in a lack of unity. And he'll show you just how much. He'll show you just how much. He's calling the hearts to repentance. He's calling the hearts. It's not me. I'm not going to live my life like that. Prophet Silva don't live her life like that. I don't refuse to not talk to someone because they're keeping their feast and they're following someone else. I I, I don't even have my own assembly because Yah has humbled me. He ha Listen, he has humbled me. Work together, Ina. Work with others. Our first name is Ina. He's having me sit in the midst of other assemblies and just look and just listen. Sometimes I get to speak. Sometimes I don't get to speak. Half of the people that I'm, I, I may go around, they don't even know my identity because I close my mouth because Yah has put me in a position of humbleness. He is showing me what that looks like and what that feels like at times. It can be uncomfortable to your flesh. We're supposed to know one another by the Ruach HaKodesh. We're supposed to know one another. But all this exclusivity, these clicks, that's got to go. That's got to go. I'll say that again. As this eclipse is going through, the finality of this covenantal agreement, the Aleph and the Tav, is being established right before our eyes. I would suggest that those that are daring to lead in a haughty way repent. Because Yah has come to redeem his people. He ain't come to set nobody on no pedestals. He ain't come to set apart no cliques. Nah, that's not what he's doing. And those who really know his path, they know that. And they're not living like that. Biggest thing to brothers and sisters that are leading and that are not living like that. But unfortunately, I have to address some whom are still being given the opportunity to repent that are leading like that. That are leading and clowning around. That are not seeing how much Yah is calling them forward. 
into unity. And for those of you that are following people, if your leader is playing with trying to be exclusive, then you might want to find somewhere else to go. Or you might want to pray. You might want to seek y'all about what to do. Because there are no exclusives to this. We are one body. And people should be able to come together and get along. This is not a click. No, this is not. Now, this video is dedicated to the upbuilding of the nation of Israel, the beauty of Israel, and the outpouring of Yah's spirit upon us. Upon us. Hallelujah. There is safety in Yah's kingdom. And there are shepherds that he has set up to feed the flock and to protect the flock. But those shepherds have to also be able to walk in unity, despite minor differences. Minor differences. I said minor. People have to get past that. Second Peter 1. We're going to read through that. It's about the growth. It's about the body of Yah, which is a governing body with specialties and authorities and partnerships that's all binding in love. And what we got to recognize and see the hand of the enemy still trying to creep in, still trying to overthrow. God's plan, which we know is not going to do it, but people have really got to get past work of the flesh. I'll read it from the beginning here of Second Peter. Close this out over here. It says, Shimon Rock, a servant and apostle of Yeshua, or Yahushua, or Yahweh all right? However you're choosing to say it, because Yah is restoring us back to our language. And that's another petty one where people are like, oh, I'm not going to fellowship with you because you say Yahweh I'm not going to fellowship with you because you say Yeshua. I'm not going to fellowship with you because you say Yahushua. Like, stop it. It's a demon. I said it. It's a demon. It don't make sense. It don't make sense. Yes, there is one true, correct saying. But is that something to sit down at the table and argue about? No, it isn't. Is that something to refuse the fellowship with someone about? No, it isn't. But you got leaders doing that. Petty point provers. Ah, got to prove my point. Got to prove I'm right. You better get past it. Yeah. You better get past it. Somebody got to hear y'all's voice today because that stuff is petty. And I'm telling you, the Ruach HaKodesh is burning in me saying it's petty. Most of us are just getting back into learning Hebrew and studying Hebrew. What gives us the right to throw around stones about something as petty as that and then fight with each other about it? We are being born again of his Ruach HaKodesh. It is a spiritual birth. Ah. Mm. See, I got to break this down even before I read this scripture. Because some of these people crossed over into Torah and they want to make this about the letter of the word. But baby, let me explain this. It's a spiritual birth. That means it's a power. It's an energy. It's a Ruach HaKodesh that falls that you're not going to pick up just because you read some scripture. That's why the Bible says that the true sons and daughters of Yah are born of his spirit. Mm. See, some people ain't, ain't, ain't even got that yet. They think just because they slid over from one cold Baptist misunderstanding to now trying to take their flesh and understand the Torah as it should have been understood from the start, that now they say, and never got born again of the Ruach HaKadosh. Yeah, no, it don't work like that. 
And then you got some of them trying to leave. Listen. That's not going to work. And that's how you're getting all this pettiness. Still trying to operate in the body. Yah is not pleased. He's calling us together. He's calling us together. Ain't no need to pretending like when Yahusha appears and you so discombobulated. Well, I don't talk to them because they say Yahweh all of a sudden he going to pop, appear, and, and you going? Ah, you're not. Mm. I know you're saying, well, who are you to judge? I'm not judging. I'm delivering the message to you. You do what you want to do with it. You can say, I don't believe her. Who she going to tell me? I, I don't know. She's just crazy. She's screaming. You, listen. You can take it however you want to take it. I, the blood is off my hand. And I'm not saying that there's not a correct way to say his name. I'm not saying that not learning how to say his name is correct correctly is not important. What I'm saying is it's wrong to be petty and to sit down and to fight about it and to not talk to each other about it if you're working in leadership. You're leading congregations to split over something that petty. And I'm going to leave it right there. I've said it in so many ways because people let their flesh rise up and try to do something now. Y'all don't want no flesh. You don't want no flesh. He's not going to take any flesh. We have to get past it. That's that's the multitude of my ministry, encouraging people, get past your flesh, get past what you think about it, get past how you feel about it, get past what you think you know, get past it, get really in the Ruach HaKadosh, get past it, get past it. And while we are not Christians per se, we are Israel, we're going to read out this scripture from the Blue Letter Bible. To Shimon, a rock, a servant, an apostle of Yeshua, the Messiah, to those who have obtained a like precious faith with us in the righteousness of our Yah and Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. Grace to you and shalom be multiplied in the knowledge of Yah and of Yeshua, our Elohim, seeing that his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and set apartness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and virtue, by which he has granted to us his precious and exceedingly great promises, that through these you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world by lust. See, we became partakers of a different nature. We're going to get on down in the scripture where it talks about Brotherly affection, brotherly kindness, knowing how to entreat your brother, knowing how to win your brother. Maybe you just need to win your brother into a deeper understanding, but you're not going to do that if you don't have patience. You're not going to do that if you don't have self-control. You're not going to do that if you don't have love. You're not going to do that. And you're definitely not going to do that if you're teaching your congregation and talking about your brother over something that petty. And yes, I said that because I've seen people preaching about this calendar, preaching about these zitzis, preaching about the name to the point where they're going to make another doctrine up about what salvation is about. Yes, we are saved through his name, but his name is a spirit. And I'll say that again. His name is a spirit. Every word on the letter of the page is infused by a spirit, the spirit of Yah. And so we can't separate the two. We can't separate the two. We are not redeemed by our knowledge. We are redeemed by our heart. Ooh, we are redeemed by our heart posture and our level of repentance. 
towards what we know. There's too many people walking around knowing a whole lot and not doing a whole lot. See, that's not bringing him the set apart kadosh. That's not bringing that to him. You bring him the set apart kadosh when you do what you know. And when you love your brother in the midst of it. The scripture says, how many times am I supposed to forgive my brother, right? 70 times 70, I believe. You got people walking away from each other over the calendar. I mean, are you serious? This is where Yah was telling us through the Messiah, do the greater works. Do the weightier matter of the scripture. Relationship building is important in the kingdom. Mm. I will say that again. Relationship building is important in the kingdom. And you got too many people tearing each other down, refusing to support each other over petty, petty things. And I don't think I can say it enough that y'all is just vexed. But what ministry you go to? I go to blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, I go to blah, blah, blah. And then they, they stop talking to each other. Because they don't belong to the same kind. I mean... It's the same divisive, demonic mindset. And it's got to go. But we will keep going here. 2 Peter 1. And I believe we're at 4 now. It says 1 and 5. Yes, and for this very cause, adding on your part all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence and then moral excellence and knowledge. Mm. notice that there was an order here and I don't want to dwell on it too long because there was a major point that was made that I don't want to soften which was unity which was getting past pettiness fellowshipping within the truth but notice that it said here and for this cause after you receive the divine nature, because if you not have, have not been partake of the divine nature, been born of the true Ruach HaKodesh, like we just got to start right there. And that ain't something that happens with your mouth. That's something that happens through Yah pouring out his spirit on you. And he decides who he's going to fill with the Ruach HaKodesh. The elders can pray for you, but that's got to be Yah's decision. When he pours out his spirit, then you become partaker of divine nature. Then you can add these things. So you got a lot of people adding knowledge and they're adding what they consider to be a supply of moral excellence, but it's a lot of pettiness. And I said it, but then we've got them adding on different things, you know, but never doing the first box, never being truly born of the Ruach HaKodesh. Because those of us that are really born of the Ruach HaKodesh understand that it starts there. You become a partaker of the nature of Yah. Your very nature changes. And then he can build you to be his vessel. So after we add diligence, faith, moral excellence, knowledge, after knowledge, self-control, and after self-control, patience, after patience, the set-apart godliness or yaliness, and from there, we add brotherly affection. The scripture says nothing about they're going to know we're true Israel because we running around with our zitzits on, quoting scriptures. The scripture says they're going to know we're truly Israel by how we love each other. Mm. Let's check out our love, people. Let's check out our love, not just our love within our assemblies, not just our love with those who are around us that we know. 
How are we speaking of those that are in other assemblies? How are we speaking? What are we saying? You have to be careful with your mouth. Notice I said there were false prophets out there. There always will be up until Yahusha's return. But those that are in the body, we have to be careful. And the Ruach HaKodesh will discern for you, will let you know those that are in the body that may have some differences in their understanding. And he will let you know not to speak evil of them. The corruption that is in the world by lust seeks to people to be divisive and to seclude themselves off and to not be morally excellent, to not walk in brotherly affection. But oh yeah, I turn my heart towards you and I pray for your people. That we as your people will extend our hands, that we will really walk in your Ruach HaKodesh and repent and allow your love to mend our hearts and keep us. From age to age, from Kadosh to Kadosh, that when your beautiful son return, we will be humble before him and be gathered up amongst the living. We ask all these things in the mighty name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. For those who've heard this teaching, it's been a blessing to you. Please like and share. Just like and share. And encourage others, especially those in leadership. Don't be petty. Love your brethren. Hallelujah. All esteem to the Almighty Yah. Amen.